Hi guys. I don't want to have to say I told you so. But there's a run on the banks. I've, I've been telling you for a, t two to three years now to be wise and to put your money into gold and silver. For those people who are listening, well done. For those who don't, it's your choice. But we're now about to see the collapse of the banking system, the stock exchange, everything. I've been trying to tell you, it's time to take action. It's time to listen to people who know what they're talking about. I've done so much research on this. I, I get up at three to four o'clock every morning to try and find out what's going on for you. Um, please, please, please listen because don't leave it too late. There's people in America who've woken up today and realized that their money's all gone because they didn't listen. Or maybe they didn't have the opportunity. You've got the opportunity. Don't make the mistake that lots of people are now doing losing lots and lots of money in America. And this is the first domino. They'll all, they'll all, they'll all fall. Wait and see. This is the start. Shall one. Kahlona Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah by Hashem Rakakadash. All praises be to the Most High Yahweh in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shah. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel. Throughout the four corners of the earth, salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad, and double honor and respect to the elders and to the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson, it's happening. And when I say that it's happening, I'm talking about one of the scriptures that we read all the time, and he calls it all both small and great, rich and poor, to receive a karagma. When we go into that word, the M to the A to the R to the K, it is a karagma, which is a incision, a mark or a penetration of the skin. So that starts with the digital retooling and reset of the current monetary system. So this thing is happening. And it reminds me of the stock market crash in 1929, right at the end of the roaring 20s. So every society, it's, <laughs> excuse me, in every society, its circulation is its currency. So that's the blood in the society. That's why we say money circulation or money is in circulation. So cutting off the blood to the society, it causes the society to have to be put on life support, on a machine. And that machine is the beast. What is the beast? The beast is the global network, the enterprise that's governing over the world under the European Union, NATO, the global elite leaders, the international bankers, which are Edomites. So gold and silver is not going to be able to save us in these times. Anybody that's not grounded in this truth is going to become a prey. <coughs> Let's go here. Let's go to the book of Acts, chapter 4. Let's go to verse, the book of Acts, chapter 4, verse 7. Let's go to verse 8. Then Peter filled with the Holy Spirit. Then Peter filled with the Holy Spirit said unto them, the rulers of the people and the elders of Israel. If we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole. So Peter is going into some of the, the miracles that were performed 
on the sick, on the lame, on those that are vexed with evil spirits, that Yahweh Shai was performing miracles and preaching the resurrection. But I want to get right to the key point. Let's go to verse 10. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom the Most High raised from the dead, even by him does this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone with which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. So that name carries the doctrine. And that doctrine is the doctrine that was preached by Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. So this is the path that's going to lead to deliverance in the days to come. <clears throat> under the great tribulation, under the global reset, during Jacob's trouble. So that name is the doctrine of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. So gold and silver is not going to be able to, to deliver us in the days to come. <clears throat> that gold is going to be, people are going to be forced to get it converted into the new digital currency in order for it to be circulated into this system. So the life support that helps keep this system running is going to be the new digital currency and the karagma being marked with the new monetary system. <clears throat> Let's go here to the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 13. Let's go down, see the beast from the earth, which is this system. And the revised Roman system is under the technocracy. Revelation 13, verse 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. So we know that this is the revised Roman Empire under the two-party governmental system where they have the democratic and republic system, democratic and republican system. And on the ancient Roman system, they had the plebeians and the patricians. <clears throat> so, and they speak peaceably. They come off with words of equity, liberty, and justice for all. But behind the scenes, they're pushing tyranny, oppression, deceit, and mischief. So they come off as a harmless lamb. Let's go to verse 12. So he speaks as a dragon, draconian laws, which are harsh, cruel, or unusual punitive measures in these laws. Goes back to ancient Athens, ancient Greece, under Draco. <clears throat> Revelation 13, verse 12. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. So worshiping this in this system is being compliant to its provisions, its laws, its statutes and mandates, which is going to culminate in this new system to be linked in and digitally plugged into it. <clears throat> so this is a reemergence, the reemergence of the ancient Roman system. Revelation 13, verse 13. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Firepower. So they're 
strength is through their sword, through their military might. So this dragon is where we would get that proverbial flame-breathing dragon. And their military, their air power, sea power, their fire power. That's why when we read Revelation chapter 12, and the dragon and his angels fought, and they're going to fight against the second coming of Yahweh Shai and the chariots of the Lord, the host from heaven. See that? Let's read this again. <clears throat> Revelation 13, verse 13. And he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Now, ancient Rome did this as well. They used the Roman catapults that would slingshot large balls of fire onto the opposing armies. But now they've taken it to the advanced modern weaponry now. Revelation 13, verse 14, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beasts, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image of the beasts. And he deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword and did live. So Rome fell, but would come back during the rebirth or the Renaissance period, which is somewhere around 1453. But we know that Jake, the Israelites, begin to fall as early as the 1300s. <clears throat> so this image is the replication of the ancient Roman governmental and military and religious system that's also copying their economic process that they use in ancient Rome. <clears throat> Revelation 13, verse 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So the technocracy policies are going to be integrated in its laws. And this is where the direction of the world is heading towards. We know that China is using a social credit score system where if your credit points go down, you can't even travel. You can't book flight tickets. You can't travel from province to province. You can't pay for your kid's college education. You see, so the technocracy is going to be embedded into the government's statutes underneath this new digital reset. <clears throat> so that's how the beast is going to speak through its policies, which is going to incorporate the Internet of Things, smart cities, 15-minute cities, carbon footprint is going to be tracked and traced, all being connected to an implantable digital purchasing device. Revelation 13 and 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. <coughs> so many are going to be beheaded for not bowing down to this new system. That's written out in Revelation chapter 20. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that is the new digital purchasing 
methods. So this is a failed economy, a failed state on life support, the new world order and its technocracy. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So this system has a trademark stamp, a barcode purchasing system. It has the radio frequency identification devices. And these system, this new system is going to replace the old monetary system. So the old monetary system has to collapse first <clears throat> and being marked. With or receiving a stigma, and the stigma is the trademark of this beast purchasing system via technology and scanning and using a digital barcode system. And when you look at that digital barcode system, it has binary codes of six, six, six in the barcode. <clears throat> Here is wisdom. Let him that have understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score and six. So that man that is talking about is that man of sin, the son of perdition. So he would be ruling in these last days, which is Esau, Edom. Let's go, to, let's go to Proverbs 23. The book of Proverbs chapter 23. Verse 3. Be not desirous of his dainties, for they are deceitful meat. So the luxuries in this life, all of the different teats and this high quality of life, that we're living here. The, this man's dainties represent his, his gold and silver, which is corrupt, which is tainted. So it's talking about <clears throat> his niceties, all of the carrots that he's dangling in front of us to keep chasing after the dollar. You know, I know you've seen that where they, where they put a, a little string in front of a rabbit and, and tied a little collar around his neck and the carrot dangles in front of the, the rabbit and he just runs on forever and ever and ever and can never catch up. So it's really an el elusive system that's just made to keep us distracted and keep us in debt. <clears throat> Let's read it again. Proverbs 23 verse 3. Be not desirous of his dainties, for they are deceitful meat. Labor not to be rich. Cease from thine own wisdom. So not trusting in the wisdom of this world. Render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. So we use the world, but not take or use our liberties for a cloak of maliciousness. Use the world but not abuse it. <coughs> and not fall in love with this current temporary system that is going to collapse. Let's go here to Book of Psalms, chapter 62. <coughs> See, this is a good connection. Book of Psalms, chapter 62. Verse 7, in God is my salvation and my glory, the rock of my strength, and my refuge is in the Most High. So we're dwelling in the secret place of the Lord, which is his private sanctuary. And that is grounded in his word under the tabernacle of this doctrine. Psalm 62, verse 8, trust in him at all times. 
So why trust in a system that's built on the failure of ancient Rome? I mean, how much sense does that make? Did not Rome fall and collapse? Was there not great civil civil division and civil disturbances, civil unrest? Were not families broken up? So it's foolishness to trust in a system that's built on a model of failure, which is the Roman Empire. So America, the European Union, and NATO are modeled after a failed structure. Psalm 62, verse 8. Trust in him at all times, ye people, pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Surely men of low degree are vanity, and men of high degree are a lie to be laid in the balance. They are altogether lighter than vanity. Trust not in oppression and become not vain in robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. Using the world, but not abusing it. So not using our liberty as a cloak of maliciousness. So this world is going to pass away. So why not lay up our treasure in heaven, which starts with learning this doctrine, repenting, and falling underneath the umbrella of truth, wisdom. This is the safety refuge or the safety net. <clears throat> Psalm 62, verse 10. Trust not in oppression and become not vain in robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. God has spoken once. Twice have I heard this, that power belong unto the most high. So we're not going to get power in this flesh. We're not going to get a promotion by trusting on the oppressor. We're not going to, quote unquote, move up in the world unless the most high ordains it, sends that decree to lift us up out of this condition. Also unto thee, O Lord, belongeth mercy, for thou renderest to every man according to his work. So the Bible says in Revelation 11 and 18, he's going to reward his servants, the prophets, and render a recompense to those that are destroying the earth. The Edomites followed by the nations that are in bed with him which includes the heathens of the house of Israel, the rebels that are going to be purged out and judged. But we know that the Bible says that judgment will begin at the house of the Lord, the Israelites. So this system is falling and falling fast. Let's close out here. <clears throat> Go to Zephaniah chapter 1. The book of Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 14. The great day of the Lord is near. It is near and hasteth greatly. Even the voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty men shall cry there bitterly. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Many of us were not taught these scriptures growing up. We were taught about this all-loving God that looks like a hippie wearing a bandana around his head and loves everybody, and that's coming back to skip through the lilies and pass out chocolates. That God is a 
made a figment of our imagination. The great day of the Lord is going to be a day of terror. Does not the Bible say he is the king of terrors? A day of the trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities and against the high towers. Modern day or spiritual Jericho, which is the daughter of Babylon, America. A day of the trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities and against the high towers. And I will bring distress among men that they shall walk like blind men because they have sinned against the Lord and their blood shall be poured out as dust and their flesh as the dung. So they're going to become bird food for the fowls of the air. Zephaniah 1 verse 18. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. But the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy. For he shall make even a speedy riddance of all them that dwell in the land. So your focus on gold, oil, and drugs, the gods of the heathen, all the gods of the nations are idols. I've been telling you for two to three years now to be wise and to put your money into gold and silver. So your false gods are not going to save you. All the gods of the nations are idols. They cannot speak. They cannot save. They cannot protect. They cannot prophesy. So you'll, you'll be buried with the gods in whom ye trust, gold, oil, and drugs. Let's read this again. <clears throat> Zephaniah 1, verse 18. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. But the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy, for he shall make even a speedy riddance of all them that dwell in the land. How in the world is Zephaniah talking about Babylon? So there's a lesson that I want to put together. Maybe two prophets maybe have crossed paths with each other because Babylon was a was larger than what, what America can boast on or the Roman Empire, or the Greek Empire. Babylon had 120 provinces. So, yeah, we can speculate that Jeremiah may have met Isaiah. We can speculate that, but the key thing is the Most High chose holy men and gave them the word. <clears throat> the Lord gave them the word. So they did not, like, sit together and congregate and compare and share notes with each other or hang out with one another. It was not like that. So yeah, you know, there may have been prophets that crossed paths. I'm talking the major prophets, not the minor prophets. Because Baruch was a scribe of Jeremiah, sure. But there were major prophets where they just were moved by the Spirit, were the most high. Let's go here to Psalms. So they didn't compare notes to come up with a narrative. These were holy men moved by the Holy Spirit. They did not hang out with each other. Yo, we boys. We boys, dog. It didn't work that way. <clears throat> I think it's Psalms 68 and 11. <clears throat> yes. Psalms 68 Verse 11, the Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those that published it. So these were holy men that were being moved by the counsel of the Lord, the counsel of angels. Let's get one more. <clears throat> Psalm 
2 Peter chapter 1. Let's go to verse 20. Knowing this first, that no prophecy is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So this was not done by a congregation of men coming together and comparing notes with one another. Have you lost your damn mind? It didn't work that way. These were men that were being moved and driven by the spirit of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, where no man can challenge their their word, their message, because the prophecies came true. And you can't say why well, they all came together and just copied from one another. On the second Peter 1 and 19, we have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. So that comforting spirit, the comforter from the counsel of the Lord and his mighty angel, an angel of the Lord that goeth before us, Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai is that day, day star, and he is the chief high priest, and he is the chief angel or angel of the Lord that goeth before the camp of Israel, before his elect. But I'm going to put together a lesson on how magical and powerful this book is, this book of prophecies, on how the Most High moved through different men. That did, that did not commune with one another, but told about the destruction of Babylon. And there is no evidence of these men comparing and contrasting notes that they gathered together. No way. These men were moved by the Holy Spirit and were all speaking the same message. Destruction to Babylon in the future, the deliverance to the Lord's faithful, towards his elect and the reestablishment of the tabernacle of David. So these men, they, they all were being moved by the divine intervention. <clears throat> Let's look at this private interpretation. Private interpretation. Let's look up. Interpretation comes from the Greek. Strong's G, 1955, Epilusis, Epilusis. Unloosing loose, application or explanation. So they're not, they were not given their opinions, but the spiritual message, which is the same message, the rebuilding of the tabernacle of David, the deliverance of the Lord's faithful, his elect, and the destruction to the wicked and judgment of the daughter of Babylon. Let's get one more. Private. <clears throat> Private comes from the Greek. Strong's G, 2398. Idios. Idios. Your own. Your own. Their own. His own. So this was not man-made, basically. The Bible says that a man's goings is of the Lord. How then can a man understand his own way? So this is a spiritual, powerful phenomenon that we're witnessing in these last days. And we're not going to be saved by how much gold or silver we have. We're not going to be delivered by physical power or physical wealth, but through the riches of the gospel and the wealth of this hidden manna from heaven, which is the knowledge sent from on high. So promotion, deliverance, and power comes from above, not from what we can physically 
grab or possess temporarily here on, on earth. <clears throat> Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem Rekakadash. Double honor and respect to the elders and to the apostles of Great Millstone. Much respect and honor to the brothers doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Kwame Yasharala in the Bible ball. We got next, Lord willing. Barakatham. Shalom.